All right. Hey, now, welcome back to another episode of Charge Talk with myself, Dana Donovic and Rob McCann. Rob, how are we doing today? Doing wonderful. How are you doing today? Man, excited. We have been talking, you know, behind the scenes about niobium and when we're going to introduce this topic to our audience for a while now. We even kind of leaked it because I just couldn't resist in the last episode, but um, couldn't be more excited. And for all the right reasons, because this is a kind of a game changer, would you say, for battery tech? Yeah, this is a this is that part that kind of there's a, a major problem that we have with batteries, and I'm, I think you want to touch on that is, and uh, that leads to fires, and we want to talk about that today too. So, Niobe addresses some of those concerns. Yeah, well, and so looking at our cell phones and all of our consumer electronics that we use on a regular basis that help us meet our basic needs you know there's always been a talk of you know that first charge and whether or not you know if you should properly charge it you know fully right away or let it drain and the long story short is what most consumers actually don't know is that about 10 to 18 percent of the battery itself its life cycle is lost immediately in that first charge. And it's all due to the impurities of the battery. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong in any part of this, Rob, because no. you're no, a resident it. expert here. Well, no, that's exactly it. It's it's a, a known factor. Uh, you know, that's the that's been an issue for this whole time. And it we want greater capacity. Lithium has the greatest energy density of the metals. Um, it's it's going to be important that you get as much as you can out of it. Absolutely. And so like in order to solve this, you know, I call it a handicap on lithium batteries, um, none other than Stanley Whittenham, the guy that basically invented lithium batteries back in 1970 or in the 70s, who happens to be a Nobel Peace Prize winner too for this, his, you know, innovative work in battery right. tech. And also for our microvast uh, shareholder listeners, he's on the board of directors, but he uh, took it to task to get to the bottom of this problem and find a solution. And that's niobium. Absolutely. The uh, issue has been a huge lingering thing, a cloud over all lithium and to get that capacity we want. So it appears that Stanley has found a way to slow down this degradation that affects the capacity of, you know, electric car batteries, our phone, etc. Um, using, you know, a new coated layer that protects cells. Um, and that coated layer is niobium. A coated layer is niobium and it to coat, to coat the anode itself, that allows it to not le uh, leach out. This is one of the, let's, let's talk real quick. Uh, this is gonna be a, a, a fairly quick subject, but one that's very important and timely. GM is recalling a whole bunch of the sparks because of fires in the battery. And what winds up happening is, is that as dendrites, which is the crystal form between the anode and cathode of lithium every time it starts to form, that causes a short. That short causes thermal runaway. As the thermal runaway happens, it starts to pack, to cause thermal runaway in the attached cells in in the in the battery itself, which at that juncture begins a fire because as the heat continues to build, it feeds itself. So that's that's an issue. So we want to try to do things to coat that anode or and uh, to make sure so the battery no longer leaches the lithium, causing a dendrite and shorting the battery. Niobium, they found when they coated that anode, it reduced that. And so it kept that initial amount of, of charge capacity uh, from uh, being deteriorated. Well, and so this obviously hasn't been introduced to the market yet, right? No. Any capacity. And it's primarily because this is still a relatively new discovery, right? And yes. Yeah. I think the article got published uh, in July yeah, so or like maybe three even, weeks ago, it's like three weeks ago. And this is a this is an interesting change because niobium um, has there's been use for niobium as a to make for a, a powder for alloys and metal already. 
but now it's going to probably have a greater use than capacity dictates, which is what we've seen over and over and over in the EV space. Um, as we go to electrification and we find these metals, these metals um, have been either, you know, just a tiny bit or marginal metals for just very particular use. And then suddenly they become um, higher and higher, which presses the chart, uh, the price higher. Um, and I, I want to say right here too, for those looking, and when they read it, you're gonna this this drives people towards research into the potassium batteries and into the sodium batteries, because each as the price of these metals goes up, uh, alternatives are being looked for. But this is the absolutely an important deal in this. Now I don't. We found a. I, I went on and I found a couple of companies. Uh, with a Google search, but I think there's still a lot of, you know, the primary ones out of Brazil. Well, it's actually out of Pittsburgh, but they have a Brazilian company. They have a presence in Pittsburgh, a private company. Uh, and then I found a different one, Nio Bay, I think is the one I found. Which but is no a, publicly traded companies. No, Nio Bay is publicly traded. It's a penny stock. But, gotcha. it, but there's not, you know, the question there is how much is going to be needed. Uh, but I, I would also want people to start looking at this and realize that that's what this niobium is supposed to be doing. And it's going to help reduce thermal runaway, which is niobium, one of the properties of niobium, niobium is to have that high thermal uh, capability. So that this winds up being, a, it, it's funny when you read the capabilities, you're going, well, why didn't we try this before? Well, you know, hey, we're, we're, this it, it's funny because uh, lithium batteries are being developed in front of our eyes and the whole technology is continuously evolving if the conversation we had just a year ago or two years ago you know um it's drastically different it's than one drastically today. different and this is a great point in a lot of people's understanding um so when a company claims to have a technology that's five years ahead well I mean, right now, if you were buying a used car and you had a 2016 Tesla S, you would not be as impressed because it's only 240 miles or maybe a 180. It does, you know, it, it, some of the technology is not there. In other words, this technology that's coming out is so rapidly being adapted. And, and then with that adaption, the next iteration comes that a lot of times it's, anybody's bragging rights is yesterday's is tomorrow's yawn yeah. you know so well, what about the whole theory of you know these ma major manufacturers just protecting their revenue stream apple wants me to shell out another thousand dollars for an iphone you know as quickly as possible so that battery life you know it diminishes noticeably mm -hmm. over time and you know i don't know if that's a real selling point for people but a lot of people theorize that this is just one of their mechanisms for getting people to shell out another thousand. It could be. Uh, planned <laughs> obsolescence has been around for a while. Um, but I think there's... What, about, you know, just the, my... what about the adoption of this? I mean, all right, so we know this is coming from arguably the most credible battery innovator, you know, Stanley yes. Whittenham, that we've ever seen. So there's credence. We know it's it is what it is, but is Apple or LG Chem or any of these big companies going to adopt this immediately? Are they going to prioritize I, I would, it for I would, and I would think you would see this fairly quickly because this answers a lot of questions, and I think it answers the questions on solid state too. Um, but I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, but my guess is it's going to be fair, fairly quickly. This was also done through Oak Ridge National Laboratories as an, as a. Uh, as a uh, federal kind of incentive and in other words, a government desire to try to find ways to, to better this. So these tend to wind up working their way out into the greater uh, technology foot footprint of the industry very quickly. Yeah. Well, I'm reading here that, you know, so they obviously thoroughly test this mm -hmm. before it's published and they, you know, so the case study... and, and it's, it's going to be scholarly checked and yeah. I, you know, when you see these major Oak Ridge National Laboratories and some of these other 
uh, groups that are the federal laboratories, you know that it's not it, it's a it's a fairly reputable deal. Um, sure. Now, is it is it applicable yet? Probably not. But in the next few years, it will be. And right now, with the with the need to to either you know you can make a car a, an EV better one of three ways, right? You can build a bigger battery, you can be uh, more efficient, or you can uh, become more aerodynamic and lighter, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the three, if not all three. Um, well, this right here will make the battery more efficient. And also, hopefully, uh, if I'm if I'm reading this right, we'll make it last longer, which is a yeah. key thing. So it's a long-term key thing. capacity as, lo- as well as the lifespan. Exactly. And most EV cars won't have enough, you know, battery horsepower per se mm-hmm. after ten years. No, no. There, and you look at the Leaf, for example. Um, the Leaf is a good study on why you need cooling during charging. Um, some of the early generation Leafs didn't have much cooling, or if any, so uh, they lost capacity fairly quickly. Uh, that wound up, you know, so you could buy a Leaf and it would have 60% of its battery. Well, it only had like 120, 140 miles range anyway. So now, so now you're looking at a day of 70 miles and, and on a five-year-old car, that's, that's a problem in the EVs space, which we don't see yet. You know, let's talk about, we're not talking about that yet. And we'll have to talk about that. You know, what happens with the EV space as cars get older? Right, because when you go to get a used EV, you're not, you're looking at you know you look at the tires, look at the body, make sure it wasn't wrecked. But now you're going to look at how good that battery is. How much long longer life does this car have? That becomes a critical decision on 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 redoing it. Neo has a interesting answer with the uh, you the buy the car, battery. you buy the car, lease the battery. Um, Brilliant. And, that is brilliant. I, I think, I, you know, I want to see that in greater capacity. Um, meanwhile, Tesla is trying to incorporate the battery into the body, which has its pros, but makes for replacement of the battery all much more difficult. So there's going to be a lot of mo- uh, changing back and forth. And I think industrially, what industrial trucks, uh, the commercial, the big, the big bodies that have large pieces uh large chassis already probably won't suffer this as bad because i think they'll be more modular because they can be right it's an easier construction i'm not i'm not worried about you know looking small and everything else i've already got a huge chassis to carry a bed to carry payload and work so i have some real estate down there to to put in a more uh, modular battery either way niobium here will play in the fact that it can last longer um it can also by coating this anode with niobium you can now increase the voltage at charging so it can charge quicker quicker that way it uh, doesn't uh overheat because that's 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 the slow part that's incredibly even, important. Even for, you know, your iPhone, your smartphone, who doesn't want to be, you know, back at full charge as quickly as possible? Yes. I mean. Yeah, it, it only charges fast in the commercials, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're watching and you're like, no, that's absolutely not real. Uh, but at the same time, this is this is a, a good place to be right now with, the, with these changes, you know. And one year out, you know, you're looking at uh, – some of the Tesla models already replacing batteries that were in their cars a year ago with a new updated battery. Um, Ford is spending a, quite a bit of money in their battery development. Microvast, we know, is a leader. Um, and then you have other companies all about there. At CATL, all these companies, there's so much money and interest into making the battery better. And that's because lithium's not cheap. And lithium's going up in price. So the better you make, you want to use as little lithium and a little bit of minerals as you can to get the, the best efficiency. Otherwise, you're going to have an expensive battery and you're going to price yourself right out of the market. Well, and I'm reading here in Wittenham's case study that he did, um, they're able to retain about 94% of the battery 
which That's is huge. pretty damn impressive. That is huge. And, and, you know, people don't want to scoff at that. Plus, if you can add that thermal protection, then you're going to have less fires and make them more safe, which strong selling, you know, you know, let's go back a little bit in time. And this is going to be, I'm going to probably talk a little bit more about this in a different podcast. But the one thing is, is that originally, and this is the second round of EVs. The first round of EVs came in the early 1900s. And when they came out, they had problems with catching on fire because the batteries got too hot. Um, that public safety issue basically made sure that gasoline was the, the fuel of choice. Yep. So we, if we look at this now in the long run, it's going to be incredibly important to make a safe battery and make a safe car that can be affordable, uh, can, can last a while. I mean, I know my, my, we used to laugh. My grandfather, when he bought a car, he, he, we would say he drove the wheels off of it and he bought it and he did not want to trade it. And he had owned de- he'd owned a dealership. And the fact is, is he did not believe in, you know, he didn't care. This was his vehicle and there, that mentality is out there. So when you buy a car, you don't want to think of it like your phone battery, right? Oh, it's a year. So my battery's not going to work well. You can't do that in a car that that right there is is absolutely a death to a car because we have an expectation of it you at least a lasting your lease cycle oh absolutely not much, not much more, and if not i want five to ten years i've you know i have an old truck that i use to to do anything when we go to the home depot and things it's going on 20 years yep that truck right there i expect it to last another 20 if i wanted it to sure um my wife just wants rid of the truck badly but my (laughs) point is is that that's that's our expectancy and how we should see things niodium coating it will probably make the battery better i i say probably because there's i think in a lot of ways this is a hard subject and it's very important so uh, i don't like to talk in absolutes sure well and i'm also reading here too on a manufacturing level doesn't change the current processes at all. Mm-mm. I mean, it's essentially Mm-mm. the same thing. Introducing niobium into the cathodes doesn't change much. So it's just a matter of sourcing it large scale and implementing it, as mm-hmm. far as I see. It, 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 it looks that way. And I mean, maybe we don't understand. I've, I have, can honestly say I've never worked with niobium uh, personally. With I've, I don't know if I've actually held niobium. Probably have in, in a metal alloy, but don't know it. Right. So I don't know the difficulty of it because I know it comes typically as a powder um, to make alloys. Yep. So here, who knows? I mean, it, 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 as much as anything, I'm, I'm my belief, though, is, is that if you're looking to invest and put more things in your portfolio, I've added niobium myself. So because I think it's going to wind up being a, a key a player component. later on. Mm hmm. Well, I think we've said it all. Is there anything else you want to include on uh, this or? No, guys, I think this is great. I'm, I'm hoping uh, we we're helpful. That's my, my goal here is to kind of go over what the heck that means and what we've tried to put it together. And I'm hoping people are finding that we're doing that. Well, I'll, I'll just end on this. Uh, Rob wrote a great article on Niobium um, that we posted about a week ago. So check that out. You can go to the Charge Talk uh, Twitter page. We have our links on there. Um, or just disrupting.news slash charge talk. Pretty simple. Yep. Anywho, Thank you. Um, until next time, right, Rob? Uh, yeah, until next time, buddy. All right, thanks. Thank you.